Hey everybody, uh, welcome. This is the uh, the collective, the CBD Utah or Utah CBD Collective. My name is John Kovach Jr. Uh, with me today is Mandy Kerr and Ryan Fritchie, co-founders of the Utah CBD Collective. And on our discussion topics today, we get to talk about uh, the CBD in the Utah market and uh, the industry as a whole. We we hope to do that with Mr. Cole Fullerman, who's joined us on the on the line, and we're going to introduce him and have a really great chat. He's got some things coming out here very, very soon that we're excited to celebrate with him and uh, to uh, to invite and share with the audience of this uh, of this viewing. But welcome to the show. Welcome to this live hour. This is fun. This is interactive. So if you're jumping on, we've already got a few watchers. Uh, say hello. Say something in the chat section. We have the capabilities of bringing your comments up on the screen, addressing them, and, and, and queuing and aing. There we go. Q and A. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pass the baton over to Mandy and say, Mandy, introduce yourself, say hello again today. And then following him will be, or her will be uh, Ryan Fritchie. And then after that, we can introduce Mr. Cole Fullerman. Awesome. It actually looks like. Uh, Mandy. Mandy frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy wasn't moving. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. That's called stage fright. No, I'm just kidding. She's, yeah. <laughs> she's doing really okay. Everybody knows she's doing just fine. Manny, if you can hear me, Manny, if you Please. can hear me, uh, go to his cell phone. <laughs> it, it, it's petrified, right? There we go. Well, uh, there she goes. She's just joining on a cell phone here. There's cell phone now. <laughs> I, will, I will take this off the screen. But Ryan, why don't you say hello while I bring Mandy up? Yeah, of course. Hey, everybody. Um, Glad to be back on today. Looking forward to a, another great show today. Uh, we're really excited to have Cole on today, especially as yesterday we were talking a lot um, about CBD and and getting good quality product, where you can get it, how to know if it's a good quality product. And we started to get into some of the, the standards and the code of conduct. Um, but today what, what I'm excited about is is starting to really get into what's going on in Utah as well, because there was a lot of comments yesterday about where's cannabis in Utah, where's it going? Um, and that's really what we are hoping to focus on today. And so glad that you're joining. If you have any questions or if you have anything that you are wanting to know or wondering, if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind just putting it in the comment section and then we can address things as they come up. Um, but anyway, can't wait for the show today. So, uh, Mandy, uh, no, this way. How do I do it? Yep, it's opposite on my screen. Mandy, your turn. Say hello. I'm back. I don't know what happened with my Wi-Fi, so I just got back on my cell phone. <laughs> but uh, I'm stoked to have Cole. I'm excited to uh, hear what's going on and what he's up to. And um, after our call yesterday or after our uh, show yesterday, I reached out to a bunch of people to um, invite them to come on and discuss some of the topics. And I think Cole's a great spot for two reasons. Uh, he's getting ready to launch, um, and I'll let him talk about it. I don't want to give too much, but um, launch a, a digital magazine and eventually a print magazine, but um, very in the know about what's going on and, and where to find um, information or knowledge. And I think that that's kind of where, what I want to take from a lot of this is where do we go um, to find some of the answers and the questions, you know, to the questions outside of um, in our inner circle, you know, how do, how do we meet new people and how do we get outside and find out what's out there? So yeah, I'm thrilled. Yesterday was fun. I, I was refreshed and felt rejuvenated. I wanted to get out and work and meet more people <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> It was great. Awesome. But, and and, and so why Cole, don't we give why don't we give Cole a chance to say hello? And then uh, Mandy, if you have any introductory background that you'd like to share on Cole, Cole can do it himself. But it's more fun to highlight our friends, so it, it'd be a good time to do that. But Cole, say hello. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it, especially on such short notice. But we're so grateful that you are excited to share and the launch what you're about to launch. But tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're at. You know, we've all been really accessible these days, haven't we? Um, First of all, thanks for having me on. I've been following you guys, and Mandy's been keeping me in the loop. And uh, it's great to be able to share our story. Um, we have so much going on, it's kind of hard to 
figure out where we should even begin, but Salt Lake City is coming to life on 420. Um, we were expecting to be released onto the public a month earlier, but because of the coronavirus, we've been, really been set back a lot like other local businesses. So um, we've had to readjust, um, set up a couple different game plans, but we're, we're launching and we're taking a digital approach, which is exciting for me. Um, a little bummer that we don't have the print coming out but it's made us readjust to where we're going to be able to make this accessible to everybody in Utah. So look out for us on Monday. It's going to be a big day. Awesome. What are some of the things, what are some of the things you're talking about, Cole? What are you, what are you putting what are you your know, focus in, in the industry and, and share some information with me about what's up and coming? You know, we, we've kind of been working as a collective, but that's been the prerogative of Salt Lake City from the beginning. When I first thought of this way back in October of 2019, um, to give you an idea how long we've been working on this and polishing it to make sure we have, you know, something that the public's going to receive well. Um, the topics are vast. It's hard for me to even figure out which one I should even talk about. We have a lot of breaking news that's going to be coming out on 420. Um, you've probably seen through the windfall, Stormy Simon, CEO of High Times, is running for state representative here in, in Utah. Um, we had an exclusive interview with her a couple weeks ago. And it's been a shame because we're trying to get this thing to launch and we have so much news that we want to dump on people, but we can't really do it with just social media. So the website's going to be a big help. Um, SaltBakeCity.com, just to throw that out there, self-plug. Um, but our focus is Utah, covering everything Utah when it comes to the medical cannabis, hemp, CBD, how to get quality products, how to contact doctors that will get you lined up for your medical card. Um, there's so much information that's really been being ignored in my point of view from local media, tiptoed around in a sense. And, you know, we want to bring a lot of these stories to light that have been ignored in the shadows, just like, you know, a lot of us patients, you know, here in Utah, we're, uh, we're coming out of the woodwork now, so to speak. Um, so local news, um, we, again, I'm having a hard time thinking. We, we have two months worth of content that we're getting ready to dish out. So it's like, ah, oh, where do I go? Um, to give you an idea, though, is we're dedicating our first issue, our launch on 420 to Tom Fursad. And if you guys have heard that name, He's the founder of High Times Magazine. Um, what a lot of people don't know is he got his journalism roots set here in Utah. He attended University of Utah, studied business administration, and started working for the Utah Free Press, which was a branch of the underground press syndicate back in the 60s. So High Times was out of here in Salt Lake City, just a few blocks away from the University of Utah campus. Um, he just happened to take the idea with him to New York. Um, but again, with Stormy Simon, you know, being from Utah, CEO of High Times now, we have a lot of small world connections here in Utah that people don't realize. And when I go out of state to other conventions or expos regarding medical cannabis or hemp, Utah still gets the chuckle when I, I tell people where we're from. But when they see what we're doing, you know, we're we're way up there with hemp industry, you know, hemp growing. Now that we have medical, you know, we're in the good fight um, compared to a lot of other states. So bringing that cool. news and bringing stuff to light. Yesterday, that was addressed. There were a lot of comments made that Utah's behind the game and that we're not caught up. Um, I have a different opinion of that. And I feel like we're definitely in the game when i'm outside of utah and at these big conventions utah has a footprint for sure on the map um what's your opinion and what do you see and why do you argue that we are you know what is your argument what and why you know utah residents are are hip to the science now and a, a lot of other states around the country are not and i think the reason for that is cbd was brought brought to us a lot sooner than than other places. Um, Orrin Hatch, and, and this is my opinion, 
use CBD as the spider to kill the fly, um, to keep medical and recreation from coming to the state. Um, but what it did was it was put in front of a lot of people that wouldn't have normally been opened up to the science of CBD. And it's catapulted here in the state. And that's allowed medical cannabis to come in as well. What really excites me is the Farm Act that took effect in late 2018. Hemp uh -huh. growing is huge in Utah. If you tell your neighbors that we have over 200 individual LLCs that are hemp farmers in the state since that happened, you know, they wouldn't believe you. But now you're starting to drive through your neighborhoods down south in Heber and you're seeing these hemp farms pop up and it's pretty surreal. You know, we are in the game. Um, so I can get long winded with these answers, but if you look at all the states collectively, you know, we're, we're in that top group that's really, really moving this thing. And the way we were initiating medical cannabis and taking things slowly, I think can be looked at from other states as an example. You know, we're not pushing rec on people right away. You know, we're, we're letting this soak in. And I think that's going to have a really big influence in the future. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I really like your perspective about how it opened up on the science side. I hadn't really thought about that, but I think that it definitely plays a huge, huge game in it. And I look at the ag side, the agricultural side on the industrial, and I talk about it all the time, but, um, you know, we're an ag community. We're a, our Utah is definitely an agricultural state. And so it it's is. undeniable to definitely be grown and is being grown. It's um, where do people find that type of information? Do you know, like where, where's the go-to outside of Salt Lake City? And obviously with the intent to bring a lot of it in house, but where do people find, does the state, does the Department of Ag, that was another question that was asked yesterday. You know, and the information's out there. But another reason why we decided to start Salt Lake City is it's so scattered. With Unless you're in the know, you really don't know. This information isn't put in front of you um, unless you're looking for it. Yeah. So we have a lot of separate groups, you know, that are doing great things when it comes to cannabis and hemp education, um, the medical side of things, um, to growing. But it's hard to find, you know, and local media again they're they're covering the topic but you know for example it was a shame when our first medical recreation or medical pharmacy opened up and i'm watching local broadcast news and they dedicate maybe 15 seconds mm. to uh to that ongoing <laughs> to history being made and it just shows uh where local media's prerogative is and without going deep into that rabbit hole Advertising comes first and content comes second, and it's apparent. Um, as a journalist, you know, I've been in the industry for about 15 years now, and I've, uh, I've, I'm trying to avoid going down that rabbit hole, but I've, I've seen it change and get it corporatized overnight. And with Salt Lake City, and what excites me the most is we're bringing back, we're not reinventing the wheel by any means, but we're, we're bringing back community journalism. So a lot of people ask me how we're gonna survive on covering medical cannabis and hemp and CBD alone. And we're not, we're covering the green scene here in Utah. And that encompasses a lot of different things from entertainment, food, what's going on in your local community, what's going on on Capitol Hill. And again, why we're dedicating our first issue to Tom Prasad and his efforts in journalism and legalization. Um, bringing back is he still in Utah? no he's no longer alive um he passed away oh. a number of years ago mm -hmm. um tragic okay. we'll be covering that in the story where it's such a long story tom um he's such such a character we'll put it that way and he's the individuals he collected when creating high times really helped push the movement, the normal movement way back when. Um, Ed Rosenthal was a contributor with the growth section. Um, we had the luxury of interviewing him uh, just a couple of weeks ago. 
And I'm sitting here in my living room right now. And in the past two months, I've managed to transform it into a newsroom. And what's excited me is a lot of my heroes in the industry have been coming to life right here um, with interviews over the phone. Um, but again, uh, bringing back that old school journalism, that's what we're doing. Uh, but we're going to have the the cannabis focus as well. I uh, I, I want to interject here. Um, Cole, we told you that um, we like to have a lot of fun on this, um, mostly yeah. because there's so many people interested in our conversations. People are just excited to, to participate in this. Um, so we have the capabilities of bringing some comments up on the screen. And so just kind of kick us up. Uh, we've got Jason Curtis in the house. He says he's glad to see everybody. And uh, we had Steve uh, Rudd jump in. Hey, Steve, welcome. And uh, I love his picture, Legends. And uh, he says, what are your thoughts on CBD flower offered in the cannabis dispensaries in Utah? Uh, we, can, we can address any questions at any time, just so you know. We don't have to address any question. Um, but if you feel compelled to or if you really want to talk about that, these are great topics that people are discussing. And from your experience and from what um, articles are being submitted, the interviews that you're conducting, what you're gathering from the data of the industry, uh, I, I'd be – I'd be really excited to hear w what you're seeing as a result of the industry as a whole, because uh, there's a few comments in here about marketing and advertising and how difficult that is. But right. as Utah seems to be kind of a front runner in leadership for this industry and CBD, especially. Um, what are some thoughts you see that we are going to be um, uh, coming up to? Like what, what hurdles are we going to be coming up to? But then also what are some things that we've already surpassed? Right. Um, Steve, first of all, this is a great question. And this is exactly the type of stuff that we're going to be diving into um, with our content. CBD flower is a big topic right now, especially with my growers, um, even within the pharmacies themselves. Um, flower, since we only have a limited amount of pharmacies right now, is hard to keep on the shelf, um, which has brought up the question, should we be bringing in high quality craft CBD flower to be an option as well. Um, but there's a lot of regulations on what type of hemp flower we can grow here in the state, the thresholds on THC, which is very limiting for a lot of farmers. Um, so I've been talking with people on Capitol Hill um, as well as our farmers. When Mandy brought up that you're you're going to be having Shane England from Great Basin Hemp on the show mm -hmm. here maybe tomorrow. Um, he's a great person to talk to when it comes to that because he's one of the leaders in hemp growing in the state. And right now he's sitting on product that he can't get rid of, you know, and that's a shame. You know, we have hemp growing is starting to surge here in the state. And if we, have a need for flour and why not incorporate that so without going into detail i've been talking with some people and i'm sure some of you have heard of the, the backpack days in colorado when when recreational first went went legal growers were bringing back fulls of cannabis and selling it to their local dispensary for high dollar amount and making a living off that obviously the the state regulations took hold and things got changed a little bit but I almost anticipate something like that might be happening here in Utah when it comes to craft CBD flour. Mm -hmm. um, having it offered to patients in pharmacies where local farmers can actually get high dollar amount for selling it to those pharmacies. But state regulations need to change with the threshold and what they're allowed to grow. Um, right now, the 1% one, 1 is, or the 0.3% is really hard to uh, compete with other markets. Um, so great question, Steve. It's kind of hard to answer the whole thing without getting long winded. Um, well, and I was going to say, so I'm working on bringing some people from the state or bringing some of the contacts that I know in to answer some of these questions that are more in the weeds with the state. And as far as how to register and what to register and what is needed, um, I have quite a few statistics, but I actually want to see if they if I can get some answers on before I answer incorrectly um, and because I'm not the expert in it. Um, right. But I know notice, notice there's a few other questions also about, um, I know there's one from Rob um, Haslam. I don't know if you can pull it up, John, um, right here. Yep. 
um, CBD flower legally into Utah if grown under the 2000, 2014. Can we import it in? Um, I don't know those those answers, and I don't know. I, I know that through the state, um, Miles is a great contact. Ryan Holloway. I don't know if anybody is on that can answer those or would be willing to chime in or or get on. I know you guys are very involved there and and can answer. Um, but I definitely will address those or look at those questions. And then as far as in the state, um, Cole, my understanding is that CBD flour cannot be sold or is sold in the state. What are the rules there? What do, what do you know about rules as far as it being in, in the dispensary? I think it's great. If it's accessible to people and can be in the dispensary, I think that that's great. But um, I know that flour itself being sold in Utah has different rules and regulations around it than a tincture or a topical or a gummy. Is that right. Correct? The people on Capitol Hill are really scared of flour for some reason. And yeah. it, it's really held us back in that regard. You know, we can step back with Prop proposition two being um, mm -hmm. voted through with voters and what a great step forward. But by no means am I satisfied with what we have going on in the state um, when it comes to, well, especially hemp. Um, I've been talking with local farmers and then farmers out of the state as well. Um, Farmer Tom, I don't know if you guys have heard of that yeah. name, the huge uh, yeah. hemp grower and advocate for the movement. He's in Puerto Rico right now. Uh, Fighting the good fight. He got stuck down there before uh, Corona. He has a big <laughs> project with local farmers going on right now, which is really exciting. We'll be talking about that on 420 with some of our content when it's released um, about a new hemp specific product to Puerto Rico that he's helping farmers with. Um, but talking with him, he, he thinks with our current crisis and the the corona pandemic going on it's going to open up the door for a lot of these hemp laws to get pushed through on state level and federal level so we're hoping that we can at least raise the threshold on thc so we can compete you know globally at least on the global market and that's where we really need to focus on as utah farmers is we're in we're we are a farming community we're set up to do this and we already are, but our farmer's hands are tied with getting rid of their product. Mm -hmm. So selling CBD flour in the state, um, there's ways to do it online, but you can't do it at your brick and mortar, um, which doesn't make okay, so, sense to me. <clears throat> so I have a question for you. When you say yeah. that their hands are tied at getting rid of product, what do you mean? And I know there's like marketing restrictions. I saw that um there was a comment made about that that i'd love to address um right. but what do you mean when you say is it that there aren't outlets that there's actual restrictions in shipping it that wh what are you addressing specifically well you the state has a setup where you can't market your flower online even um so farmers like shane england have you know a few pounds of craft cbd flower that he's trying to get rid of but he doesn't have a way to let people know <laughs> It's hard mm -hmm. to sell something, especially right now when we're all stuck at home, how to sell a product. And we're experiencing the same difficulties on our end where I'm trying to launch an informational magazine in the state and I, I'm restricted to my house, but Facebook won't let me promote any of my, my activity because it's cannabis and hemp related. So we've had to do a lot of grassroots advertising just to get the word out there that we're we're actually coming out and farmers are having the same problem with selling their products. Um, so Cole, there um, with all the neighboring states and there are a lot of other, you know, digital magazines, a lot of other marketing agencies in the other states. Can farmers not work directly with them to, to market their products? So it can be grown here, but, they really just got to go to neighboring states to market and sell it. Right. Is that really what they're going to have to do? Mm -hmm. Are there still restrictions on 
on the strains they can grow and how that uh, that farming operation is is done that's still limiting for them it is it's it's as if it's not an open market um it, there's only certain avenues you can get rid of your product and those avenues are narrow yeah um one of our what are some in, go ahead go ahead cole i'll, I'll ask uh, one of our sure. friends and family pine valley farm they're down in uh uh, Springville down south, they're doing great things. Um, they got started right when the Farm Act took effect, and they're having to sell a lot of their flour to California, mm. who is then, you know, selling it in ways that they're allowed to, you know, which is a shame. We've we've had CBD available in the state, and when first when CBD products were first available, we were only able to get products to make these products from the UK or China. And so it got it put a, a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth because we had a lot of bad products out there. And now that we have farmers growing quality product, you know, it'd be great for them to be able to get rid of it locally. But the restrictions of how they're able to do that again are just or tying their hands. And I'm curious what those restrictions are. I understand the marketing, you know, like the restrictions we have in marketing. Um, on Facebook or through social media or SEO and the challenges and cost of what's available, right? Of the cost per click or as we're putting money behind it. Right. Um, but if there's, if there are buyers or if Utah is manufacturing or producing, um, we have the farmers. Are they, are the people in Utah not buying or does Utah not have the, manufacturing I, I mean because we have some huge extraction facilities right is it that they're not being linked up they're not aware of who who they are they um is you know what's a solution we can provide and get that out there if um if that is the case or is it on the legislation side where there are restrictions around the transportation and the the type of flour also that are putting restrictions on utah heavier than any of these other states, neighboring states. Right, and so number one, it's hard to sell a product that you're not, uh, I'm trying to think of where to start with this answer, but. Uh, I feel like it's pretty, I feel like there's um, obviously a few things, right? But I think right. that on the, I, I haven't heard so much. I know there are restrictions in Utah, and this is maybe a good question for, you know, some of the big farms or the co-op, you know, like Shane or yeah. or Pine Valley Farms or any of these um, big manufacturers that may be dealing with or extraction facilities that may be dealing with multiple farms. But I hadn't heard that Utah has more strict restrictions around the transportation or delivery of product than say somewhere like um, Colorado. I mean, Colorado's pretty loose, but say on the East yeah. Coast. You know, in, in farmers, as long as you have the proper credentials, transporting within the state isn't difficult. It shouldn't be. Right, yeah. um, right. Marketing your product is, you know, and that's where now we that's have- a different topic, too. right? And then we For can sure. bring up even the taking payments where a lot of, payment systems aren't set up to take payments for hemp or cannabis. Um, well, and I think that's a topic yeah. for Ryan. Uh, that's we can talk about. Well, and that's why it's difficult so. for me to answer this question because yeah. there's so many different things that are holding up farmers um, uh, and the people that are selling their products. Well, and uh, I think maybe that's, maybe that's where we, you know, those are topics that I want to address or that we together collect collectively can address, mm -hmm. um, you know, by, I want to have an entire or a session where we can ask questions about payment solutions and why it's important to go with credible banks and banking solutions instead mm -hmm. of a fly by night. I don't want to put names out there, but accounts that aren't CBD approved, right. That right. will shut down and then it long-term hurts the business you know, or marketing strategy. I, there are plenty of marketing companies now that have had a ton of success in moving that product, you know, right. but who are they? 
I want this to be a platform just like yours on the website or a print press where we can come and answer those questions and bring them yep. together, right? And so um, I think I have, I've done a lot of research and a lot of looking into who those people are and found some solutions, but I'm definitely not the expert to be able to speak to how a lot of them work, where right. running the payment, a, a processing, a, a merchant solutions expert, literally, I mean, mm -hmm. in the space has been doing it and in nutraceuticals for a long time. And so he's got a lot of experience on a lot of different companies and sizes and, um, and yeah, same with marketing. Well, and let's just, if we can pull this up, Jason's last comment. Um, I mean, we're talking about payments a little bit and, and I'll just address this real quick because there certainly are some limitations when it comes to payments. And there's a lot of limitations on the solutions that, that provide processing for this industry. And that's something that we can easily handle uh, from mm -hmm. the dispensaries to the CBD, to the online, from the vaping, uh, there's a solution out there for anybody and everybody. There is. Um, what it comes down to is finding out exactly what people are looking for and needing and then aligning them with the processor that can facilitate their needs. Uh, banking is another issue. Um, there mm -hmm. are solutions out there for banking as well. Um, and so I just want to address that real quick to answer your question, mm -hmm. Jason. That's a great question. And, and in the next couple of days, um, I want to dive into that much, much more. Um, mm -hmm. But let's, and maybe let's just stay on this subject for a second because Roxanne just brought up a, a comment here. And then I want to go back to something that she had said earlier, uh, John, but she just said, I was turned down for a business bank account by everyone. I went into Golden West Credit Union, had no problem. I've had my account since December, 2019. That's true. So a lot of your banks and credit unions, when you go to get set up with an account, one of the questions that they are specifically asking you now is, is your business related to or involved in the CBD cannabis industry? And if you say yes, it's immediate decline. It's It's been a big challenge. And yeah, there are some localized banks and credit unions that, that will work within the industry. Um, but it, it's still extremely limited. Um, and so she she makes a comment in here that Golden West Credit Union did set her up. Um, I've heard differing things that that they were starting to clamp down on on who they were setting up. I know at one time Bank of the West was setting people up and now they have stopped. Um, and I know that there are some some trust banks and some fintech banks that are coming out specifically to to um, support this industry. Um, I guess my question back to you, Cole, is is maybe if you can help anybody else that's listening, if you know of any other specific banks or credit unions in Utah that are supporting the industry. Yeah, that's that was a struggle with us when we first started getting up. I, I went into three separate branches, um, started with my my personal bank account branch, yada, yada, um, turned down every time. I actually went through the process getting the first deposit made and I would get a call the next day saying, ah, never mind, <laughs> we can't do this. Yeah. And it was tough for me because we're not selling products. You know, the only thing we're selling is words, you know, we're strictly <laughs> educational and informational. So, but you're guilty through association. You are, right. you know, and, and just saying that, that four letter word hemp, you know, you know, puts you Doesn't on. Doesn't even have to list. be a word. <laughs> right. And it, it, uh, it could be any, anything that's related in a sentence. You could have the letters that spell cannabis and you'd be denied. <laughs> well, yeah, and you, you, I got a lot of these banks that we just brought up, uh, Golden West, Bank of, uh, or Bank of the West. Bank of the West as well um, at the networking events. And, you know, when I would go in there, we <laughs> it would still get turned down um, until things went to the upper management. But it seemed like a lot of bank accounts that got set up um, were just good timing. And maybe the lawyers got involved and went, ah, started telling their branch managers to hold off on taking these accounts. But that's been a struggle. There's been a struggle every turn we've gone. But 
talking again with farmer Tom, we're resilient people, you know, we keep going and here we are um, despite all the legality issues. Um, but these topics that are coming up, that's why this is a brand new green horizon. And I, I still don't know all the answers. I'm still finding out answers every day. I don't claim to be an expert, but that's why we're doing, doing the research for, you know, Utah residents. I put together a team of columnists from our the Leafly lawyer, J.D. Loritzen, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Tim Pickett, uh, Robert Hill, who's a grower at Hill Family Farm, um, Tanazi from Colorado, who's our micro-dosing psilocybin expert. But I'm bringing all these people together to bring this content to people, the actual experts in the game. We're, I have my team of reporters that are going to be doing our local beat and bringing daily news on our website, but bringing the experts that are actually in the fight right now, I think is crucial in, in helping us out tremendously. So look forward to that. It's not just me bambling. We've got a lot of people helping on this project. <laughs> so Cole, yeah. um, I wanna ask you um, a question here. I mean, I love what you guys are doing and what you guys are going to be doing for the, for the state, for the people in the state. When it comes to the regulations, to the legalities of cannabis, and maybe you've got an answer to this question, maybe you don't, but what can people do to help? What can people do to get involved, to, to help push the, the agenda? Um, where can they best get involved to, to help in this, in this cause and in this push? You know, that, that's a good question. And I, I've been asking myself that for years living here in Utah, how, how can I make a difference and how can I join the good fight? And um, again, that's where the magazine came up, you know, as a journalist here in the community, seeing these, these topics get ignored and tiptoed around again. Um, I felt that was the best way I could contribute. So, but there's a lot of different avenues, you know, Number one, the easiest one you can do is get your Utah medical cannabis card. One, you're a number, another number on the list that the state can't ignore. And in my mind's eye, the way since we we started Prop 2 and dispensaries have been opening, it's been clear to me that this, this has been set up for failure from the get-go. And to see this succeed and people participate in it, I think is the best way that you can, you can fight right now. Contacting your, your local uh, representative on State Hill or State Capitol, it's, a, a letter can go a long ways. But again, showing that you're in the good fight just by getting that card is number one. Um, read our magazine, stay involved find out who the key players are in your community and maybe link up with them. And that's what's helped me out tremendously with the magazine is it put me out there to talk to farmers, talk to the legislators, talk to the shop owners and know what's going on in our community and bringing that fight, you know, bringing those voices to light. So Salt Lake City is that soapbox for everybody that's out there, you know, making waves in this industry to get up and shout what they have available. Um, and we're excited to bring that. So I'm going to just put in this comment box real quick, but the state actually has a website. It's medicalcannabis.utah.gov. Because I know, Jason, you just asked, how can you get that card? Um, this is a good resource to start. You can apply from this page as well. Um, and they've got some education on here, some continual education that you can can go to to learn. Um, you can look at you know what patients need to know. There's information about providers, production, pharmacies, and different resources and when I look at the resources, and this is where it becomes difficult too, I believe for people because, yeah, they break down the 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 cannabis law in Utah, but it's in the bill format. They need to they need to simplify it. They need to dumbify it for for people like me because 
How many people want to go through each and every section of that medical bill and read it to try and understand it? Right? I think, uh, Cole, that's what that's one of the things that you guys are obviously going to be doing in your magazine. Yes. Is bringing that to light and making it make sense for for people like us. Exactly. And you're talking to a journalist that studied photography. So visual literacy is going to be huge with our print and our website. And with that comes a lot of photos, a lot of videos. Um, looking at the state website, all the information is there. It's there, but it's hard to navigate. Mm. There's a lot of different steps and some of the steps don't make sense. So when you read that stuff, it's hard to <laughs> calibrate that in your head. Um, bringing tutorial videos on how to get your card, simple bolded listed articles on, you know, the steps you need to take, making that information easily accessible and easy, easy, easy to read is what we're, we're aiming to do. Um, Cause you brought up a big point that although we have this program set up, it's really hard to navigate. It's a lot like going to the DMV. It can be frustrating. And if you don't have your ducks in a row, you're not going to get the, uh, the results you want. Yeah, um, going to the local dispensary, Dragonfly downtown the past couple of weeks, um, seeing patients down there, talking with staff. A lot of people are coming through thinking that they're set up and ready to go and they're not. So we'll be bringing a lot of information to make sure that, you know, this program isn't frustrating for people. And I think that's the, <laughs> the quickest way to turn people off and back onto the black market is to make it hard to access and then, you know, hard to understand as well. So again, the information is there, but it's just, it, it has to be spelt out a little bit clear. Yeah. I agree. So that's something that I want to bring, you know, bring as well. And I think that's something we're focused on is each of these are, are recording. We're able to put content out, um, get information out. There's lots of questions that come in that I want to continue to answer. Um, one thing that you brought up earlier when we talk about like um, changing changing the standards, right? In business, when we talk about the business of the industry, um, what does that look like? You know, when we shift from the change of the consumers and distribution, but to actually the uh, business in the industry, how do we elevate that standard? And I think, you know, education or platforms being presented where you can access information, but also in the, uh, you know, following the, the seed to the sale, you know, know where is grower. it? Um, know your grower. Yeah, and understanding yeah. that, you know, and in every other industry, those are so relevant and can so available, but also in, um, the, uh, you know, <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. Echo. Keep going. You're good. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, what does that look like? And how do how do we bring those those tools to our farmers and our manufacturers and our distributors and our um, you know on the industrial side, educating more on the use of the plant outside of just the medical side. Um, yeah, what does what does that look like for elevating standards in the business? We are we are in the aspect. process of doing it right now. The problem that we're running into is we're cleaning up a lot of trash that's been left aside from the past few years. That CBD was available before Utah started growing the product. We'll put it that way. Again, when CBD first was initiated. Or, introduced to the state, we were getting product from China, from the UK. Um, that was either whole plant material or CBD extract formulations that were already done. And frankly, it was garbage product. And it turned a lot of people off to CBD. And I think unless you've experienced bad product and then actually using a quality CBD product and seeing the difference between the two, you really don't understand that. You're still in that snake oil state of mind which is easy to be in again just with the the garbage product that we've had so now that we're able to grow it here in the state you, you brought up the most important thing when it comes to medicating yourself 
and using these products is know your grower. If you're not growing it yourself, you need to know who's actually growing it. Um, because there's a lot of good ways to grow it and there's a lot of bad ways. And there's people that are doing it the bad way because it's quicker and they get more product. We'll put it that way just to keep that simple. So now that we have local growers that you're able to keep an eye on and know are growing craft product, you know where the, that product is going into the brick and mortars that are popping up here in the state. It's allowing residents to get their hands on product that works. So again, we're cleaning up that garbage and we have to almost reintroduce a product to the population that's actually quality, you know, and again, we're doing that. Yeah, I think that there's that's that's one thing. I know of a couple of platforms that have been introduced, you know, that um, either track the sale or you can kind of you can get on and determine what you're trying to treat or cure, right? I'm even right. interested on the bulk process of mm -hmm. um, you know, like what you and I had spoken about earlier. If if we have farmers that have no problem distributing what are they growing for or distributing for so we know the need or what's happening inside utah right and and have a better understanding of that um, yeah. and having those resources on all of that um instead of just the consuming side right the consumption side but right. um yeah i'm interested in the business the business aspect and really increasing standards the topic we talked about yesterday is even our, you know, code of conduct on how we behave as individuals on a professional level as this is, yeah. this is a business. This is not a, yes, there is a recreational use and maybe that's where they're getting tied in. Right. But right. it's a business. These are people's livelihoods and it's mm -hmm. used just in the pharmaceutical, med, you know, industry. It's a, it's a medication for people. Yeah. Um, but there's definitely this lack of, consistency from this industry to any other industry from platforms to marketing banking and it's a hard concept when new people are coming into the industry for sure but it's a i no, can't see that comment. it's a brand new green horizon for business owners for farmers for consumers here in utah and roxanne brings up a, a, a great point it, it all comes down to the quality product and how you're using it so when we first started getting this stuff here in Utah, it wasn't quality product and nobody was telling you how to use it. The science wasn't out there. The science is slowly starting to get put in front of people's faces and that's been able to normalize the situation. Um, but the quality products that are popping in are gonna be the key um, for turning people on and showing that there is great benefits to this and other medical practices they've been using are kind of obsolete. Well, one yeah. thing that I wanted – oh, go ahead, Ryan, if you wanted to jump in. I was no, just, go ahead. Uh, there, a lot of people have been commenting and, and participating in this on the back end, so I, I really appreciate yeah. it. We have everyone's comments up on the screen, but I did want to go back for just a second and just – briefly say as we're taking notes on some of the comments and questions that you guys are asking listening at home um this is a topic i think we'll dive deep into as a with, with somebody who has a lot of background in marketing both mandy and i and and ryan um i think it'd be great to get on here and talk a little bit about what people are doing with having a lot of success in cbd hemp and, and, and cannabis uh, with marketing online and advertising and that's a that's a whole other discussion we'll get into but i just wanted to take a verbal note and to confirm with some of our listeners and watchers <laughs> that uh, uh, we will talk about that. That's a really great topic that we'll consider. And then as we kind of moved in, you know, there've been some really great shout outs and some really awesome compliments to you, Cole. Um, uh, there's a lot of admirers and, and, and so forth, but I've just, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's, who's been participating and who has been um, complimenting us and, and, and being active on this call. So with the next 10 minutes, are there any other last minute um, discussion items you guys think we can cover? I'm super excited. And, and again, Cole, don't forget to give your plugs for 420 and what you guys are launching and just continue to repeat that just in case people are just now joining us. Well, we can't promote ourselves on Facebook. So tell your friends and family, you know, that we're coming out. We're, our website's going live 420 um, next Monday. And again, we have two months of content that are that ready to dish on people. So it's gonna be a plethora of information from grow topics. Our columnists have all their articles up and ready to go. 
um, a lot of Corona themed stuff, your 420 local guide, everything cannabis and hemp related here in the state and uh, get educated. But uh, I'm well, glad I think people are commenting too. This Go ahead. This is a great opportunity for people who are interested in writing about cannabis or getting into the industry. Yes. Uh, Cole's a great contact. I've had a couple of people reach out interested in journalism or uh, technical writing for the industry. And so Cole is Cole definitely has some contacts. I've got a couple of opportunities that I'm happy to share as well, but definitely pushing business or pushing opportunity over um, where he's got the end. And I think his first story um, you know, on Tom is a great, great example of success in writing opportunity. Um, and I'm really impressed by your desire or interest in really providing that to other people. So I think it's great. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. And we want to incorporate, we, we've been a small team and the virus has kind of kept us from growing like I wanted to right from the beginning and recruiting some of these local journalists, but that's some something we want to do here very soon is bring on on board some local talent we will be doing the daily digital focus so again our website's going up but we're going to be bringing news every day um, regarding this topic um, from the national scene to our local scene um, and especially with people being stuck at home you know we're, we're going to be here entertaining people a lot of stuff to read so a lot of visual literacy and we need help from local writers. So I, I look forward to teaming up with some people and bringing them on board to help out. Cool. Well, I again, reach out to anybody that has, there were a lot of topics dropped again today. I made some notes, um, but anybody that has um, contacts or um, considers themselves an expert in any one of these topics across the board in the industry, I'd love to chat, chat with. I think marketing and the, Payment solutions definitely needs to be a topic here soon as we're growing and we can provide solutions. And Cole, it's something I know that um, Ryan and I have talked a lot about, but providing that resource through your form is what I think would be a great tool as all these guys, all these entrepreneurs are starting business and understanding, you know, what they need as far as payment solutions and banking and marketing opportunities and so forth. Right. Um, but yeah, if so, um, I give a shout out to anybody or reach out to anybody that can come on or want to come on. I've got a great lineup of people over the next week coming. Um, Shane is one with um, Great Basin Hemp. I'd love to reach out to some of these other farmers to get a good discussion going about what's happening in the in their realm and in their sector of the industry. But or verbal, but um, yeah. So yeah, this next yeah, Andy, just to add to that. I've really appreciated the um, all the input that Roxanne has brought in and her involvement with yes. us this week. Um, talking about yeah. just the benefits of CBD, I'd love to bring her on as well um, this week or next week. And let's just talk about the benefits and go through um, some of the things that people are seeing and what it's what it's doing for them for their different illnesses and sicknesses and. And let's let's give her some time to to share with us her knowledge too. So, if Roxana, if yeah, absolutely. You're still on, uh, we'll reach out to you and and see if we can set up a day that works for you too. Absolutely. Let people know I think too. too. I saw another comment on there with Rob. Rob's doing uh, sales all the, all over the nation and addressed a good point about the difference in sales across. Uh, maybe maybe able to speak to some of the farmers or some of the discussion about distributing product. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I, awesome. I, like I said, this refuels my fire for sure. So I enjoy this as an extrovert and getting information out and the outreach we've had after this has been fabulous. Yeah. No, what, what a great hour it's been too. I mean, with Cole and Cole, everything that you shared with us just amazing information that that we all needed to hear today so really appreciate you coming on today with us no thank you thank you so much for having me it's great to talk about this we've had so much going on it's been quite hectic really um looking for forward to 420 coming and getting this project launched just so the real work can start um but bring up uh we've had a lot of great questions pop up and people 
contact me. Let me know what you want to read about in Salt Lake City. Any topics that are holding up your business, um, your farm, um, you as a patient, let us know so we can address those issues and 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 get to the, uh, the root of the matter. And Cole, this is where I invite you. Please join us every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, log on. We have a lot of people that log on and just play it in the background. We have some people that log on and really get engaged. Um, John added our Facebook group here, but it's we'll do live. We commit to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 10 a.m. just to get discussions going and get some questions answered. Um, all posts. You know, I, I, the, some of the people I have coming, you know, anywhere from discussing science to the marketing, um, I think a, a topic we need to squeeze in sooner than later, maybe with the marketing is definitely the payment processing, whichever yeah. corner I'm pointing to opposite. But, um, <laughs> and then farming, uh, yeah. And then I also, um, you know, extraction. I had some good questions yesterday about the difference in extraction, the CO2 versus ethanol yeah. extraction and what the difference. And I think that there are some new and upcoming solutions that are uh, yeah. coming that are different and, and what that looks like, right? Um, somebody that I'm trying to get right away is, is to discuss the COAs, where to find it, how to read it, the education about what you're looking for. Um, so those are definitely topics that I've, I've got in the wheelhouse sooner than later. So Rocky Mountain Hemp, when it comes to the formulations, they're located on State Street, I believe, 4902 South State Street, where they're brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. but they've got a lot of great things going on with their scientists. They're getting ready to unleash a new vape product. I think in the next couple of days, at least before 420, you'll be able to read about that. Again, we're putting together a 420 local survival guide on a uh, on ways to help support local business, which is key right now. And uh, also stay prepared for 420. <laughs> so something big is coming on 420. I just feel it. I feel yeah. it's coming. <laughs> is, there, is there anything that you have? I know we can't mark it, but do you have anything, uh, any image or picture that we can post on our Facebook page here um, so that we can keep reminding people as well? Is that something yeah. you could something you can share with us? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'll send something over your way. We've actually got something we posted yesterday just announcing 420. It's our psychedelic poster. We'll put it that way. We're having a lot of fun with our, our art on this. Um, that's what's exciting me the most is for 420 is to actually unleash this project that we've been working on for about eight months now. Um, a lot like High Times, Ed Rosenthal and Tom wrote for about a year before they actually unleashed the magazine and they worked on that, that content for the first two years. And um, we've been kind of trying to follow suit in the same way. So it's it's been fun. So for everybody on here, if you haven't looked at, at your calendar yet, 420 is Monday. So on Monday, Everybody is going to be crashing the site of saltbakecity.com. Do so it. Hopefully we can crash the site. That would be awesome. But Monday. Monday's Monday. Monday. Yep. Can't wait. Can't cool. wait. We'll be, uh, we'll be dishing out all our articles on social media and keeping people informed. So um, with the Daily Digital as well. So the website will be up 420. It'll keep you occupied reading probably for the next week, but expect fresh news every day coming out on this topic, on what's going on in the state, what's going on nationally. Um, we've got celebrity interviews coming up that we'll be dishing out. We're still trying to track down Tommy Chong, um, but being involved with Stormy Simon has really opened up a lot of doors for us. And it's great that we have people in the state helping us succeed. And that's what's, you know, made I, I can't there's so many people to thank on this you know it's been a really quite the group effort there are definitely a lot of movers and shakers and if anybody knows stormy i'm putting a shout out to her i've been <laughs> on a call this morning trying to do the same <laughs> yeah. but i'd love to I'd, I'd love to to bring some women in the business together and have yeah. a good talk sorry gentlemen but um i think that she's a powerful influence and has so much strength but yeah i'd love to get it out and shout about it so he is there's a lot of women doing great things here in the state you look at beehive buds in their group that yep. they have over there and collectively you know she, they're coming on this week 
they're killing it, you know, and their products are great. So they're, we have some people here in the state that are setting the bar pretty high for, for others that want to get involved. And that excites me. So we'll be recognizing all those heroes in, in our daily <laughs> content, but we'll also be recognizing the heroes too. So keep, uh, keep an eye out for that. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, That's thank so you very great. much, Cole. No, thank you guys. Have a great day and stay safe out there, huh? You as well. You as well. Be safe, everybody. See you guys. Thank you. We'll see you all tomorrow. 10 o'clock. Join our, join our uh, Facebook group. Get involved on that level and just let us know everything uh, that you're going through. Uh, Cole, we're big fans of you. Thanks for joining us again today. We just want to reapply the gratitude and also um, just thanks for your contributions. We we applaud you. Steve Rudd applauds you and everything you stand for. And uh, we're, we're just grateful to have you as the collective um, allow us to be your advocates, allow us to find ways to connect you with the right people and to be connected through you and your network and so forth. And so we're happy to support you and, and this network of awesome, incredible, uh, professionals and let's grow this and move the needle. And we appreciate you. Thank you for joining us and we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 10. See, ya. see you guys. Thank you.